Welcome back to my channel, Paparazzi. Today I have a video for you on all the farming seeds and how to make money with them. Before we begin, I'd like to thank everybody for supporting the channel, leaving comments, leaving likes, and subscribing. As a reward, I wanted to give you a longer video with more information. Also, I'm doing a giveaway, a $25 Amazon gift card. Somewhere in this video, there's going to be an Amazon gift card redemption code. It's only going to last for one frame, which is only a fraction of a second. So you must be paying attention. Do not blink. And you must watch through the entire video in order to find out where it's at. Because I can't tell you where or when it's going to pop up. If you do happen to find this code and you do happen to redeem it and you are the first one to do so, you will be given $25 to Amazon to buy anything that you want. And if that happens, please let everybody know in the comments that you are the lucky winner. Let's go ahead and get started. In order to understand this guide, you must know how I got to these numbers. So let's just go ahead and start with the setup. I started with a farmland of 20 by 20. And I did everything by hand at first, watering everything, planting the seeds, harvesting the seeds all by hand. Eventually, I acquired enough money and licenses to upgrade my production to include a watering tank and a sprinkler system. So, for the 20 by 20 grid, that allows me to harvest and plant 400 seeds. But with the sprinkler system set up, I had to sacrifice 4 spots for the watering tank and 16 spots for the sprinklers, resulting in a yield of 380 seeds rather than 400. So it cut it down a little bit, but it sped up the process because I didn't have to do any of the work myself. So with that being said, all these numbers are based on a 380 crop per yield setup. But let's move on to how I got everything. In order to get the commerce license, you have to get level two on your wood chopping skills, on your mining skills, and on your fishing skills. At that point, Fletcher will send you a letter in the mail telling you that you have unlocked a new license and that will be your commerce license. Having the commerce license allows you to sell things for a little bit more money. I had a max commerce license, so every number that you see here today is based on the max commerce license. So if you don't have a max commerce license, your numbers will vary. Also, these numbers that I'm giving you are rounded off. And that's because these prices are actually decimals. They're not whole numbers. In my chart, I'm using whole numbers. So again, the larger numbers that you see here might actually be a little bit lower than you will actually see in the game. But you know, that's good for you because that means you're making more money. Moving on. In order to do any of this stuff, you're going to need Rain. Rain is an NPC that joins your town after a certain amount of time. It starts off, of course, in the visitor tent. And once she visits, it's imperative that you talk to her, do favors for her, purchase as much as you can from her, and she will see the value in the town and decide that she wants to stay. Once you've convinced Rain to stay, and actually before that, you will be able to purchase seeds from her. And you'll also be able to purchase a water can and a hoe. Now using these items, you're able to make this 20 by 20 grid like I did. Or you can scale it down or scale it up however you want. But again, these numbers are based on the 20 by 20 grid with 20 spaces taken up by sprinklers and watering system resulting in a 380 crop setup. In order to get the sprinklers, you need to have a farming level of 10. And to get the advanced sprinklers, you need a farming level of 20. In order to be able to craft the water tank, you need to have an irrigation license, which comes from having a farming level of 20. In order to get the tractor, there are many things that need to be accomplished. For starters, you need to unlock Franklin. In order to unlock Franklin, it's the same as Rain. Whenever he comes in the visitor's tent, do as many favors as you can for him and purchase enough stuff from him. Once you get him to eventually stay in your town, you have a better chance of unlocking the tractor. All you need to do is give him a bunch of shiny discs in order to unlock new recipes for him to create and one of those recipes is a tractor which costs 1.5 million dink and also requires a few items in order to craft. But in order to get the tractor, in order for you to even have him make the tractor, you need to have agricultural vehicle license. In order to get the agricultural vehicle license, you need to have a max farming level, a max irrigation level, and a vehicle level 2, and an agricultural vehicle level 3. You actually only need the agricultural vehicle level one in order to purchase and make the tractor but you need the agricultural vehicle level three in order to use the three different attachments which i go over in another video so check the link now let's get into the actual breakdown chart that i made let's start with autumn here are all the different seeds that you can obtain and plant and harvest in autumn any other plants that you try to harvest in this season will just wither away the next day 
starting with wheat, which is an all year round plant. So we're only going to cover this once along with sugarcane, even though it's going to pop up in all the different seasons. Let's break it down. Also, this chart will be available in the description. If you would like to download this chart, make sure to check it out in the description. If you decide to use this chart in any of your videos, or if you want to use it for a wiki, that's fine. Just give me my credit. Wheat is an all year round crop that takes nine days to grow and it yields two wheat per seed when harvested. It has no special requirements. We'll get into special requirements in a moment, but let's move on. It costs 360 dink from rain in order to purchase this, and it sells for 281 dink with a max commerce license. So the batch. The batch is how much money you will make after harvesting a full crop of 380 wheat. Because wheat yields two, that's going to be two times 380 times the sales price of 281 which equals 213,560 dink now the ytd or the yield to quarter is going to be 664,408 what the year to quarter number represents is how many batches you can get in one season and the season is 28 days so autumn lasts for 28 days spring summer and winter also lasts for 28 days so all these numbers are based on that limited number of days there are some exceptions which we'll get into a little bit later so wheat can yield 664,408 dink worth of wheat in one season now sugarcane it's the same all seasons it takes 12 days yields one has no special requirements and the seeds purchased for 400 dink each and the crop sells for 728 dink that's basically how you would read this chart now let's move over to something a little bit different we have tomatoes here tomatoes will grow in two different seasons summer and autumn and they yield three tomatoes per seed and it takes 11 days to grow the initial batch of tomatoes but they continuously grow every six days and the special requirement is a steak which it's going to be a problem for the money making portion of this because the tractor cannot plow through a stake which means you would have to do all this manually which makes things a little bit more difficult tomato seeds sell for 1620 and an actual tomato sells for 456 and the batch 519,840 and you can continuously farm these while having to plant these multiple times so the overhead is going to be a little bit lower because you don't have to keep buying the seeds. The yield to quarter is 2,079,360. And then you see in parentheses 3,638,880. That number represents two seasons because this goes from summer to autumn. If you're looking at just one single season, you look at the 2 million dink. If you look at the full range of the tomatoes harvest, it's 3.6 million dink. Moving on to corn, corn is Pretty much the same as i've already explained to you before nothing new here pumpkin pumpkin is a special case i'm not actually going to be including pumpkins when it comes to the money making portion the reason why i don't include watermelon and pumpkin in the money making portion of the video is because watermelon and pumpkin both have to have a root from the root can grow four different crops either north south east or west of the root not to include the diagonals and you will be able to plant a lot less crops in the same setup as before a 20 by 20 filled with 16 sprinklers and a water tank usually can grow up to 380 crops but with this setup the same setup with the sprinklers and a water tank you can only grow up to 49 of the pumpkin roots and over here is where some of them are going to be on the side so they can only grow up to three instead of four so that's even less crops that's less than 49 and the chance of you getting more than one is slim to none i got two here and i got two here but mostly i only get one i haven't gotten three and i've never gotten four so even with the best case scenario of four you're still getting a lot less crops than you would if you were to plant a 20 by 20 uh, 16 sprinklers one water tank that's 380 crops and then these corn right here will spawn up to two. So that's 760 crops. Whereas this will, won't even get you probably two, maybe 300 crops. It's just not worth it. Granted, the pumpkins are worth 4,000 per sale, but it's just not worth the time or the effort. And it's too random. And that's why I don't include them. 
pumpkins grow in autumn they have a root that grows in five days and after five days they start sprouting pumpkins and the pumpkins will fully germinate in six days and be ready to harvest they start sprouting out after the five days and every day is random when one pumpkin could start sprouting any day that there's a space available and it takes another six days for that sprout to fully germinate into a harvestable pumpkin again i'm not going to go over this when it comes to making money that's why the batch and the yield to date are random cabbage same as anything else i've already explained to you next we have winter again we have wheat and we have sugarcane we're not going to go over those again we've already been over those corn we've already been over that as well carrots same as everything else i've already already explained if you have any questions make sure you leave it in the comments below and kale again same as everything else there's nothing special about this you can go ahead and freeze frame the screen take a screenshot if you need this or again you can download the link down in the description let's move over to the next season spring wheat and sugarcane again same as before green beans they have a stake as well, just like tomatoes. It's not feasible for them to be used as a money-making tactic unless you want to run around on foot and harvest them each time that they grow. As I'll explain to you later, even though running around and harvesting them yourself doesn't seem like such a bad idea compared to the tractor, I'll show you later what the more profitable crops are. And it'll also save some time so you can go do other things in the game. Potatoes. Potatoes are just the same as anything else. They grow in spring, take 10 days, yield three. They have about 1.8 million, probably about 2 million after all said and done. Moving on, onions again are pretty self-explanatory. They don't have any special needs. Moving on to summer. Summer, we have wheat, sugar cane again, green beans again, onions again. And then we have watermelon, which is just like pumpkins, but they sell for a little bit less than pumpkins. And then we have tomatoes. Tomatoes require a steak, as I mentioned before. They grow in 11 days and then six days continuously after. Anytime you see five continuous or six continuous, that just means that after the initial growth, they continue to produce crops until the next season. So what does all of this mean? I know you're probably wondering, what are the actual best crops to use to make money? And I went ahead and did the math on that one as well. For one single season, the best crop to use to make money is kale in the winter time with a value of three million dink for winter but after winter of course you can't do this anymore it only works for that one season the most bang for your buck for multiple seasons is the onion the onion can be grown in summer and spring it takes seven days and yields three you can purchase it for 540 dink and it sells for 585 dink each giving you a batch of 666,900 per harvest and the yield to quarter is 2.6 million dink now this number that you see the 5.3 million that is over the two seasons if you were to continuously grow these over the two seasons you will make 5.3 million dink the best all year round crop is between sugarcane and wheat and wheat coming out above with 664,408 yield per quarter times four equals 2.5 million dink but i wouldn't recommend doing wheat all year round i suggest you use the multi-season crop of onions for summer and spring and i'll switch over to corn for autumn and winter using both of these crops will net you over 8 million dink per year and this is all scalable this is all based on the 380 crops per harvest you can always scale this up you can trim it down however you want to do it that's all I have for you today. If you got to this point in the video, make sure you put Farm Fresh in the comments so I know that you made it this far. And if you were looking for that $25 gift card, it has already flashed some time before this part. So hopefully you got it already. Anyways, um, all your support has inspired me to make this longer video. It took a lot of in-game and out-of-game days to put it all together and to compile these lists. Um, but I'm glad I can help everybody out. Maybe you'll see this list in the wiki one day. But for now, I'll catch you guys later. I'm out. Peace.